Well, good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you on this special Sabbath today. And of course, on today, uh, we want to wish you a very, very special Merry Christmas uh, from myself and my family to all of you. Uh, the reason we're on Zoom today, we knew a lot of people uh, were going to uh, be out of town and a lot of people were traveling as well. And so we just decided to have our services on Zoom, uh, a short, brief service so that all of you can participate and we can come together and, and truly celebrate this day, uh, the day that the Lord has made, uh, the day that we celebrate uh, Jesus' birth. Now, obviously, uh, we don't know the actual date of Jesus' birth. Uh, we don't know exactly um, that hour or that time, but it's the day uh, that generally the world has come together to acknowledge that day. Yes, it has been uh, taken in different directions. People have thrown in Santa and the Christmas tree and different things like that. But if we can just focus our mind today on Jesus, I believe that we will be benefited uh, by this day. And I'm certainly glad that all of you are here uh, on this Sabbath day as well to celebrate it. I also want to take a moment just to thank all of you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I can speak for Pastor Gomez as well uh, for the awesome card and gift uh, that you gave your pastors. Um, just as much as you appreciate us, we certainly appreciate every single one of you. We love Hilltop. We love being at Hilltop. And we look forward to what God is going to do um, in 2022. Now, this is the last Sabbath of the year. And so I, I believe uh, that we can uh, take a moment and just give God praise. Can you do me a favor right now? Can you just go in the chat and just say, thank you, Jesus. Just say, hallelujah. Put your hands together right where you are. Whatever you want to say, just give God glory. You've made it uh, to the last Sabbath of the year in anticipation of what God is going to do in 2022 for you as well. God is so good to all of us. Well, uh, because I know that most of you are probably with family and friends, you may be driving right now, you may be traveling to a loved one's house, uh, we'll keep it short today, and I appreciate you being on. I, I want to ask you if you'll take out your Bibles now, and you'll go with me uh, to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 19, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 19. Incidentally, I want to just shout out uh, my parents and my family. That's where I am right now, my hometown in Charleston, uh, South Carolina. Uh, but I wanted to take this time to be with you all on this special day. But Matthew chapter 1 and verse 19 from the NIV version, um, I, I want to approach this text today, Matthew 1 and verse 19. And, and the word of the Lord says to you this, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and some versions say he was a just man, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Let me read that one more time. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly quietly. I want to speak to you briefly from the subject today, a heart like Joseph, a heart like Joseph. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to preach your word and the opportunity to spend time today with family, friends, and loved ones. I just ask for your blessings upon what we talk about today and discuss over the next few moments. I pray a special blessing over my friends and my members and family and loved ones right now, wherever they are, uh, across the country or even across the world. Father, I pray uh, that we will embrace uh, the spirit of your incarnation, the fact that you decided to come and live amongst us. We thank you so much. Bless us and keep us, God. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen and amen. A heart like Joseph. You remember if you were in the building online last week, we, we talked about Mary, your girl Mary. Now Mary was a, around a 16-year-old girl. She was young. She was a virgin. She had never been with a man before. And here comes the angel of the Lord coming to tell her and really kind of interrupting her plans and telling her that she was going to be pregnant and, and conceive uh, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And we talked about how difficult that was for her, how much of a divine interruption that was for her. But we also have to look at the other side of the coin as well and kind of look at her, her fiance, her soon-to-be husband, her groom, Joseph. And I want to share with you today, brothers and sisters, very quickly that 
I believe that as you read the story of the incarnation and you read the story of the birth of Jesus, what you come to find out is, is that Joseph is actually a type of Christ. For some of you who have never heard that term before, what it simply means is that there are characters and people in the Bible that through their actions and through their story, they represent Christ or the character of Christ or the character of God through the experiences that they've had. And I believe Joseph is actually one of those people. Now, imagine with me again, I want to tell you, keep your feet planted on the earth. I don't want you floating in the spiritual atmosphere right now. I just want you right now to look at this from a human perspective. Here is Joseph. He is engaged to the woman of his dreams. They have already sent out plans and wedding invitations. They have the venue planned. She has already picked out her dress. The colors are made, the bridesmaids, and the groomsmen are chosen. They are ready to get married. And, and while they are still in this environment, engagement stage and planning the wedding. The Bible says that Mary comes to him. She's 16. She is a virgin. She has never been with anybody, including Joseph, clearly, and comes to him and says, I'm pregnant. And the reason she gives is, is because the, the, the child that is in my womb has been conceived of the Holy Spirit. Now, brothers and sisters, please, I know that you know the story. But once again, I want to ask you to please look at this from a human perspective. This sounds ridiculous. This sounds absurd that someone could be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. But here is Joseph. And, and I think it's important for us to look and see how Joseph actually responds to what Joseph says. Now, before we get there, I must say, I know how I would respond. <laughs> At the very least, my, 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 my brow would be furrowed. I'd be looking very confused and befuddled. Some of you would be angry or upset, and some of you would go to even deeper lengths. But at the end of the day, that's not what the Bible says about Joseph. But the Bible says, because Joseph, her husband, watch this, was a just man. <laughs> he was faithful to the law. The Bible says he was a just man. What it means is that he was a righteous man. He was an upstanding man. He was a man who read his Bible, or let's just say his Sabbath school lesson. He was a man who believed God and who trusted God, who put his faith in God. And the Bible says he was a man of the law and he was a just man. But watch this. And yet, did he, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. So the Bible is actually sharing with us that there was somewhat of an inner struggle within Joseph. On one hand, he is a just man, and he knows what should happen to Mary. But on the other end, he is a man that did not want to expose her to public disgrace. And see, what I want to stop right there for a moment, because there's just a few points that I want to make and get out of your way. The Bible says he did not want to expose her publicly. What does that mean, Pastor Coxon? Well, here it is. It means that Joseph didn't want to put her business on front street. It means that Joseph didn't immediately go to social media and tell people what Mary told him to make her look bad because now he looks bad. Uh, it means that he didn't run down her name like a dog in the street and start rumors about her, although from many people's perspective, he probably had every single reason to do so. But a matter, as a matter of fact, the Bible says he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He didn't want her to be ridiculed. He didn't want people to talk about her. He did not want people to, to throw stones at her. But in fact, what I believe is he showed her grace. <laughs> and see, what is grace? Well, simply grace, brothers and sisters, is unmerited favor. Everything about this situation seemed to convey that she was in the wrong. But Joseph somehow was able to look past her faults. Oh, God, here's my help coming. He was able to look past her faults and be able to see her needs. And see, I already told you that Joseph is a type of Christ. And see, what Joseph represents to us is really the character and the heart of God. See, this is an example of how God actually deals with with us routinely, I mean on a routine basis, God looks past our faults and he sees our needs. And brothers and sisters, come on now, be real with me today. Aren't you surprised and glad that some of the stuff you've done hasn't been exposed 
exposed in your life, that, that your life hasn't been ruined by the choices that you made, that's grace. <laughs> Aren't you glad you haven't gotten what you actually deserve? That's grace. Aren't you glad that you don't look like what you have been through? That's grace. <laughs> you deserve it. You, you, you don't deserve it. You, you, you didn't earn it, but God gave it to you anyway. And watch this. One of the things that I've learned in 34 years of living on this earth, which I'm sure you know as well, is that grace is not common in the world. I mean, I dare you to stop paying your bills and ask for grace. <laughs> I dare you to do that. They'll cut off your water and your lights. They'll foreclose on your house quicker than you can say amen. I, I dare you to go to the grocery store and pick out all the stuff that you want and go to the department store and pick out all the nice clothes and show up at the register. And when the cashier gives you your total, I dare you to say, well, I'm paying with grace today. They will laugh you out of the store. I, I dare you to make a mistake even in this life and have the unmitigated gall to even ask for grace. People won't give you what you think you deserve because see, at the end of the day, grace is not common. But here is Joseph showing un, 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 uncommon grace to his fiance, Mary. And Joseph is an example of how God deals with us in this Christmas story. The Bible says he was not willing. <laughs> he did not want to put her out there and expose her to public disgrace. Now, I don't know about you, but I am grateful today that there are some things in my life you don't know about. Come on, say amen, somebody. Uh, th th there are some things and some stories and some experiences and some situations and some circumstances God is never going to tell you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I am so glad that my story is not in the newspaper. I am so glad that God is not in the business of uh, 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 of tabloids and, and telling everybody what is going on. As a matter of fact, man, if God were to just pull the curtain away from any of our lives and let us see all the stuff that we have done, we may not trust each other or may not be in the same building. And you may not even want to listen to me today, but our God is in the business of grace. Mm. And I thank God today. Thank you, Jesus. That, that, that we are not judged by the worst thing we have ever done. And see, when I look at Joseph in this Christmas story, I see that my brother had every opportunity and possibly every right to kind of expose Mary and to put her out there to save himself some embarrassment. But, but, but instead, the Bible says he's not willing <laughs> to, to expose her to public disgrace. And I am grateful today that our God is not willing to expose us to public disgrace. I'm grateful today that God extends grace even when we don't deserve it. I don't know about you today, but, but, but listen, I thank God that God does not cancel our future because of our past. Oh, Father, today. There's some of you right now, if you were to just take a moment, just, just lean back in your chair. Just lean back on your couch right now. Just close your eyes for a second and begin to think about all the mistakes that you've made, all the times you've been disobedient, all the times when you went left and God told you to go right, all the times where, where God has asked you to do something and you delayed or you waited or you did not do it at all, all the times you went somewhere, you had no business going, all the years you spent doing stuff that you knew God didn't want you in and you knew better at the time, but yet God still works with you. Yet God still deals with you. Yet God still extends his hand to you. That's grace. And I see that in the story of Joseph. Any other man would have automatically assumed she cheated. Clearly, she had an infidelity. Clearly, she had an affair. And she thinks I'm um, stupid enough to believe that somehow she got pregnant by God. Everything in that man should have been willing to expose her. But because he's a just man and because our God is a just God, God has grace on us, just like Joseph had grace on Mary. Just remember. <clears throat> That God loves you, man, this is so good to me today. God loves you despite what you've done. Oh, Lord, help me today. God loves you despite what you've done. You see, I don't care what you've done. Watch this. There's grace for that. You sinned last night. There's grace 
for that. Uh, you made a mistake in the past, there is grace for that. You put your hands on something you shouldn't have, there is grace for that. You put something in your body you shouldn't have, there is grace for that. No matter what it is, God has grace for every single situation in your life. And I don't know about you, but for that, and listen, just that alone, I'm grateful today. I'm grateful I'm in my right mind. I'm grateful I have a roof over my head. I'm grateful I have clothes. I'm grateful that my family is okay. I'm grateful that I'm in a reasonable measure of health because when I really think about everything, I don't deserve anything from God. Your boy Joseph, man, could have turned her life upside down, but watch this. Grace ruled his heart. And listen, this is not in the notes today, but I feel the spirit pushing me here, um, brothers and sisters, that if Joseph could do this to his fiance in a real crazy circumstance and situation, and God can do this for us, we should be able to do this for each other, especially in this season right now. Let the spirit of the season rule the day. Can we have grace on one another? When people make mistakes, can we not judge them? Can we not drag people before the board and the pastor? I'm not talking about y'all. I'm just putting this out there into the universe, y'all. Uh -uh. Can, can, can we love people despite what they've done when somebody makes a mistake do 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 we have to um do we have to cast dispersions on them and and tear them down people are already hurt after they make a mistake we don't god doesn't need us to hurt him anymore but in fact god calls us to be agents of grace to love people despite their worst sin mm. well that ain't all that's in the text the, the, the bible says the bible says watch this the bible says he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. But watch this. The Bible says <laughs> he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Mm. This is a just man here. The Bible says he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Now, now remember, brothers and sisters, uh, Mary has told him um, that, 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 that the child has been conceived of the Holy Spirit. Now, you need to know something if you do a little study. Friends, even in biblical times, this would have been hard to believe, let alone in 2021 or in the 21st century that we live in right now. The law was clear. If Joseph had, had of exposed her supposed infidelity, watch this, she would have been stoned. So if Joseph had gone to the priests or, or Joseph had told his neighbors or Joseph had told any of the scribes or Pharisees, uh, it was according to the law that Mary would have been stoned and killed. Watch this. Yet Joseph, who is not even aware of God's plan, decides that he would spare her her lofty punishment, her lawful punishment, excuse me, and divorce her quietly. Mm, Lord, help me today. Um, however, brothers and sisters, in Jewish law, <clears throat> there was no such thing as a private divorce. You know, it's kind of funny um, because it was not funny, but but it's interesting. There was a very public divorce that was made um, uh, uh, very public on social media just a few days ago. And I'm not even going to mention their names because I don't want to give it credence or, or add my name to the conversation that is happening, but, but, but a, 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 a very common, uh, popular uh, celebrity and Christian couple, uh, Adventist couple, uh, got a, a divorce the other day. And as soon as the news came out about it, like people just started going off on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and saying, see, kind of like, that's what you get, or, or you married the wrong person, or I knew it wasn't real. Like people are, are throwing up all these judgments and stuff like that because in the celebrity world like there's no such thing as a private divorce like everybody is going uh, uh to know about it uh, but at the end of the day brothers i just want to let you know we don't know what's going on in people's lives we don't know the plans that god has for them and it's really not our role to really like speculate we're supposed to leave that to them and just pray for the couple and pray for them individually that god would work this out but see, Joseph kind of wanted to keep this private because in his mind, he's probably thinking, I, 
I mean, th th this is this is crazy. Either my fiance has lost her mind or she's had an infidelity and an affair. And Joseph, who clearly still loves her and is a just man and a righteous man, decides to say, not only will I not expose her to public disgrace, but I'll divorce her quietly so that nobody knows, so that nobody can talk about her like a dog, so that nobody can put anything on social media like they're doing right now uh, about this couple. And I just want to say to you today that Joseph was being kind. But you also need to understand how sacrificial uh, what Joseph was doing actually was. Please don't miss this today. I promise this is going to bless you. You see, what you need to understand is that according to Jewish law, if no accusation was brought, then people would have assumed that Joseph impregnated her before marriage and now sought to abandon her and the child. See, I had to do a little research this week and kind of figure out this story for myself. And most people don't know this. It was not just Joseph being kind. There was no such thing as him just like divorcing her and them, them moving on with their lives as people do today. Get married one day, get divorced the next. No, there was no such thing in Jewish law. See, it, Joseph only had two options. The first option was to bring her before the board or before the church and then for her to be stoned or killed because she likely had an affair. The only other option was for him to do what he's doing right now, but then people would have assumed that he impregnated her and that he did no longer wanted to be with her and he was trying to divorce her quietly so that he could cover up the scandal of what he did and see what I'm trying to tell you is is that Joseph was such a godly man a man that loved Mary so much that he literally put himself in the line of fire for her because now instead of her being subject to being stoned Joseph is making himself being subject to be stoned and see even with his suspicions of wrongdoing mm, 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 mm. and everything to lose, he had no desire to harm her, but he actually put himself in harm's way for her. In a sense, he took her place. <laughs> this story is much deeper than people give it credit for. Joseph put himself in the place of possibly being stoned because he was a just man and he loved Mary so much, even though, God help me today, I don't know how many times I can say it, even though he had every reason not to trust what she was saying. And see, when I look at Joseph in this part, I clearly see my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I see the character of God all over Joseph. You see, this is what the spirit of the season is all about. God sent his son, his only begotten son, to take our place. This means that the consequences of the actions uh, fall on Jesus and they don't fall on us. I said he took our place. Let me say that again for somebody in the back. I said he took our place. He made himself subject. Mm -mm -mm to the punishment of sin. In fact, the Bible says he became sin for us. The burdens of all the sins of the world, all of your mistakes, all of your issues, all of your disobedience, all of your problems and circumstances, Jesus took your place for you. And instead of you getting what you deserve, now you get what Jesus deserves while Jesus gets what you deserve. And I thank God today for his amazing grace. See, G Joseph gave himself up knowing what was going on. And, and, and oh, hold on, back up. Joseph gave himself up not knowing what was going on. Watch this. Your boy did not even know the entire picture. He didn't understand God's plan. He probably thought Mary was crazy or she had had an affair. And yet, despite what he did not know, Joseph gave himself up for her. But I'll even go one step further because it's one thing to give yourself up for something that you're speculating on, but Jesus gave himself up for something that he knows. I know you've heard this before because I've said it before. Brothers and sisters, you are fully known 
and you are fully loved. Meaning Jesus knows everything about you. He knows what you did yesterday. He knows what you're doing today and he knows what you're going to do tomorrow. God knows everything about you, every hiccup, every hang up, all the skeletons in your closet, the stuff that you try to hide under the bed, the insecurities that you have, the problems that you're going through, the, 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 the propensities, the, the temptations that you deal with, the addictions that you have that nobody knows about. God knows about everything. And despite God knowing everything about you, he died for you and took your place. And watch what the word says in Romans 5, verse 7 through 9. For scarcely a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It means that he knew we were sinners and he died. He knew you were going to mess up and he still died for you. He knew he was going to forgive you and you were going to go right back and do the same thing and he died anyway. And Jesus came just like Joseph to take our place and put himself in harm's way for you. And I don't know about you today, but your boy is grateful for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. All right, come on. I got one more point and I got to get out your way today. Yeah, the Bible says um, um, that, that Joseph did not want to expose her to, to, to public disgrace, meaning he showed her grace and God shows us grace as well. <clears throat> the Bible also says he he, he wanted to um, divorce her quietly, which means that he would have put himself in harm's way and he took her place and God took our place as well. But I'm going to show you something else. Come on, go with me back to Matthew 1 and, and verse 20 and look at the text and what it says here. The Bible says, but after he had considered this, mm -hmm, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you ought to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, <laughs> he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Oh, father dad, as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until he gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. All right. He, he, here's the point I want to make. And I, and I got to get out your way today. <clears throat> um, not only, oh God, um, did, did, did Joseph not want to expose her? So he gave her grace. Not only did he want to uh, divorce her privately, which means he put himself in harm's way, but the Bible says he, he kind of waited for to see what God would say. And when the angel finally spoke to him and told him what was going on, the Bible says he married her. Mm. The Bible says he married her, which is to say, brothers and sisters, that he, he joined his life to hers. He, they, they joined bank accounts. They, 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 they joined their reputation together. They, they, they took on each other. He, she took on his last name. They, they came together as one unit publicly to the whole world to let them know that, yes, we are married and we love each other. And in order for you to kind of understand how deep this is, you got to transport yourself back to the first century to where Jewish law dictated that this is a scandal. This is crazy for Joseph to marry her. This is absurd for him to want to be with her when she got pregnant out of nowhere before they even consummated the marriage. It's crazy. But Joseph loves her so much. Mm and cares about her so much and being such an upstanding and righteous man that the Bible says he married her. Now back up for a second, brothers and sisters, because each one of these characteristics in Joseph represents the character of God. God has grace on us 
just like Joseph had grace for Mary. God, God puts himself in harm's way, just as Joseph uh, puts himself in harm's way for Mary. And Joseph marries Mary. And I just want you to know that God loves each and every one of us so much, brothers and sisters, that not only does he say he's our friend, and the Bible says he's our elder brother, and he's the door, and the way, and the good shepherd, and all of these characteristics, but the Bible actually says that we, yes, believers, we are the bride of Christ, meaning that God... Mm -mm -mm, Despite all of our sins, despite all of our wickedness, despite all of our mistakes, despite all of our disobedience, God has the gall to let us take his name. He marries us. And see, the reason Jesus came through the womb of a virgin, when he was born on this earth and lived 33 and a half years and then went up Golgotha's hill and died on the cross only to be risen on the third day to enter into heavenly courts, the Bible says when he ascended on high, he sent back the spirit to live inside of us. In other words, God said, it's not good enough for me just to be your friend. It's not good enough for me just to be your shepherd. It's not good enough for me just to be your way. I want to marry you. I want to become one. God loves us so much that even though we have messed up, God decides I'm going to live inside of you to help you do what you can't do for yourself. And see, I don't know about you, but this is good news to me today that God would allow me to take his last name. I am a Christian. I, 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 I'm connected with God and everything that God gets, I can get or I can ask for because I am his child and I am the bride of Christ. I am a part of his kingdom and and a part of his heritage. So I inherit all that he has. See, God loves us enough. And listen, when you read the Christmas story, I want you to read it now with new eyes. When you're driving down the road and you're seeing a nativity scene and you see the little baby boy, Jesus, I want you to recognize that that baby came into the world to die for your sins. I want you to personalize this thing. God loves you so much, even though you've cheated on him, <laughs> even though you've had infidelities, even though you've had a myriad of affairs, even though you cursed God behind his back, even though you wouldn't listen to his word, even though you wouldn't be obedient to what he said, even though you haven't been faithful in coming to church or faithful in anything for that matter, you haven't been a very good Christian and not a very good advertisement for who God is, God says, I still want to marry you. I still want to meet you at the altar. I say I do. If you will say I do, I will marry you and I'll change your life. I'll bless you in ways you never thought possible. I'll take away what you should get and I'll give you what I should get on your behalf. And see, this is why we praise God during Christmas. This is why we're so happy with the, the verse, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. We celebrate this day. We celebrate this season because we know Jesus has come into the world to die for our sins. And I wonder today, as I close, watch this. Um, I wonder if there's somebody on the line right now. You're feeling unloved. Ah, you're feeling lonely. You feel like you can't come back to God. Maybe you're here today only because you only come to, to church twice a year on Easter and on Christmas. But because you're here today, it falls my obligation to tell you God loves you. God loves you more than you can ever imagine. God cares about you more than you could ever imagine. And listen, just like Joseph, God doesn't want to publicly shame you. He doesn't want to put your sins and your stuff out there. And God is willing to stand in the gap for you. If you'll just make a decision for God today, God will accept you as if you never did anything wrong. I wonder today, you know, I don't do this often. I'm going to do this right now on Zoom. I wonder if there is somebody under the sound of my voice who just wants to give their life to Jesus. Come on, you can put it in the chat if that's you. If it's not you, don't worry about it. My feelings are not going to be hurt. But if you need God today, if you just want to say, God, yeah, I feel like I've turned my back on you and I don't want to do it. 
in 2022. Yeah, maybe somebody right now inside of my voice, uh, maybe you've been in church this whole time, but maybe you just want to express some love. God, I love you. God, I appreciate your sacrifice. It don't even make no doggone sense for God to come down and die for his creation. But God, I accept your love today and I accept your sacrifice on this Christmas day, 2021. And I look forward to what you're going to do in 2022. If that's you today, come on, just put it in the chat right now. If you want Bible studies, if you want to be baptized. I don't know who you are. Maybe somebody does. Just put it in the chat. Somebody will get it and we'll talk to you. We'll reach out to you and make sure that we can take care of you today. But during this season, as you're sitting around the table with your friends, family, and loved ones, remember Jesus came to die just for you. And even though you don't deserve it, ah, come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus today. Oh God, I just thank you so much for your sacrifice. And I thank you for what you've done. Thank you, God, for <laughs> becoming a baby for us. Thank you, God, oh, for subjecting yourself to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the, the temptations of humankind, to be hungry, to be thirsty, to be without, even though you had everything at your disposal. You never had to leave streets of gold. You, you never had to step out of eternity and into time, but you love us that much. So we thank you today for your grace, your mercy, and your love, and we ask that you would bless us as we go forward into 2022, in Jesus' name, I do pray. Let every believer say amen, amen, and amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, I love you so much. Please go uh, enjoy the food with your friends, family, and loved ones. Try not to eat too much. You know, we do believe in temperance and modesty. Come on, say amen, somebody. Uh, but open those gifts. Enjoy time with your family. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you all very soon. God bless. Bye-bye.